Here's Russell, now with the side tanks on and the cab fitted and the cab roof fitted and the cab back here. Um, you can see that the way it's screwed together here, we've got um, tells on the front bracket here on the smoke box. It's got these brackets here and all these little screws are holding the, um, the side tanks onto these um, the running boards. The only place it's held onto the boiler is at the front here on this front bracket. So let's have a look inside the cab. I've got the radio control set up inside here. In the cab roof you can see the um, battery and the receiver. This is for the RC of course. Um, and all the wiring running down the back here. I need to neaten that up. The aerial I'm going to poke out through the window. You can get interference as a consequence of this all being metal. Uh, you want to give the aerial the best chance it can at receiving the signal. One of the other designs I put into this is, as you can see, the back's closed here and I need to hand fire it. So what I can do is I can actually slot the back plate out. It's on um, registration pins here. Once it's in this position here, I can get to the firebox. I can see all the controls. That's the, uh, the regulator from the servo motor here. This is the lubricator. I can get to the lubricator, take the top off the lubricator here, and then the lubricator drain is down here. Nice and clear of the foot plate, easy to get at. When I come to the end of a run, I lift this part of the foot plate up, slide it away. Then I can put the peg up here and get deep inside the firebox. And you see, I've still got to make the grate. Most important part of the steam engine, the grate, I haven't done it yet. You see the tubes at the end there. These here are for the balance between the two the water tank on either side. These are This is the balance pipe going down and running underneath the foot plate here with a T-piece off. With the T-piece off to the side, coming off the, um, the balance pipe here, running round the boiler fill valve there and running up and underneath, feeding the axle pump between the frames. So back to the, um, the cab here. I'll close that up. And I'll put the floor back in place. I have a blow down here for the gauge glass. Just remove the aerial, get that out of the way, you can see it there. Um, tucked around the side of the door here, oh, I should say around the side of the, the lubricator, you can just make out the switch for the radio control. I'll switch that on. So now the radio control receiver and um, motors are active. I bring it around here. This is the, um, the radio control unit. It's a uh, radio link. It's quite a cheap Chinese RC device. It's six channels. Um, it has around here and it has two switches on the top. The switches, the switches I thought were going to be useful for sounding the whistle, but I don't think I'm going to have enough room for a radio controlled whistle. I might have room for a mechanical whistle, but not a radio control whistle. I'll show you that in a moment. So anyway, put the radio on. Yeah, the motors come up. You can see the reverse, that was, that's backwards, that's mid gear, that's forwards. And then if we turn it round, turn it into the cab, you can see the throttle. Now I have a takeoff, the main steam manifold, and you can see the nut just here and I can use that for a whistle valve. I might be able to stick a whistle valve so I can actually operate it with my hand. I think a whistle is very important with a steam engine. Uh, it gives it its voice, although the chuff is also its voice, but it's nice to have a whistle. I would have preferred to put radio control in, but I just don't have the space. What I should have done is allowed a space inside the tank here for another radio controlled motor so I could operate the whistle valve. What I'm going to do is put the whistle I can carefully, I'm going to put the whistle underneath the wheels here, fasten it to this cross section here. 
but I'm not going to um, I'm not going to do that until after I've steam tested it and got the whole thing running properly. I'll then make the whistle and make a little video about making a whistle. So that's the locomotive. Next is the grate.